Professor Wargley is here. We just finished number three, radios. Make sure you save this file. We're going to move to the next file. Number four, checkboxes. We are in number four, checkboxes.html. You'll see the checkboxes that we coded in the forms lecture. You'll see I have two buttons here with on clicks already pre-written for you with the function name and the parentheses. And the functions are already pre-written up here to speed the lecture up a little bit. But for an exam, make sure you know that the function name needs to match, case sensitive, and the parentheses need to be there. And the on click needs to be there in order for this event to be fired. Now, let's look at the example here. Right here, look, you'll see I have the check boxes and a few of them are checked. We want to see if we can toggle a single check box which will then allow us to toggle all of the checkboxes. Now let's first work on a single checkbox. In the previous example, we looked at dot value and dot check. Well, let's take a look at the checkbox. So if I want to grab a checkbox value, I'm probably going to store that in a variable. So let's make a checkbox object. And now the checkbox object is going to use the DOM. We're going to get an element by ID. Now let's say we get the first ID. You'll see ID is equal to coding. So I'm gonna put that ID here and see if I can print it out. So I'll do a console directory and I'm gonna print out my checkbox object. Now look at these two lines. I know the function's getting called because that was pre-written, so let's refresh. I'm gonna click on toggle single checkbox. You'll see the checkbox object is actually null. Why is it null? So this function's getting called, these two lines are running. Well, if I look at the ID, ID for the first checkbox is coding with a capital C. And here I put coding with the lowercase c. In this case, the IDs are not case sensitive, and thus the DOM is not able to find an element with ID equal to coding with the lowercase c. So if I put a capital C here or a lowercase c here, then the element will be found. So if I refresh the page, Toggle single checkbox, you'll see I have input ID equal to coding. Now let's look and see what we have. Coding is checked, so let's see if I can use the check attribute. So if I uncheck it, do toggle single checkbox, let's scroll down, look at the second object, you'll see its checked value is now false. So for radio buttons and check boxes, I can use the dot check property. But how do I do that to toggle the checkbox? Well, we're gonna take a look at something new and something that you're gonna be using on an exam quite often. I could do this. I could say if checkbox object dot checked, okay, I could say it's equal to true. So let's say I say it's equal to true. I'm going to do this. I can take that checkbox object and I'm going to assign the checked value equal to false if it's equal to true because I'm gonna to toggle it. And then I could do an else. So either it's false or it's true. So I could just do it else. And I could say, well, if it's else, that means it could be false. So I'll change the checked value equal to true. But you'll see this took one, two, three, four, five, six lines of code here to write this simple if statement. I'm gonna save it. Let's make sure it works first. So I'll refresh the page. I'll do toggle single. And let's see, I have an error here. Looks like I'm missing an equal sign here. So let me put equals save it, refresh the browser, toggle single. You'll see it was true, now it's false, click it again. Was false, now it's true. So I can toggle it on and off, but this took a lot of lines of code to write. So let's comment this out. I'm selecting all of the lines and I'm going to do a control forward slash or command forward slash to comment it out. And I'm gonna introduce a new operator. It's called a ternary operator. And it looks like this. If the checkbox object dot checked is equal to true, so if it's equal to true, I could actually get rid of this equal statement because if this is equal to true, then the if statement will execute, otherwise it's gonna go to the false. So technically I could get rid of this equal statement and the code will run the same. But if I wanna specify the value, I can as well. So if it's equal to true, then, you'll see the question mark, then I'm going to change the value to false, which is what we did. 
Otherwise, I'm going to take the checkbox objects checked value and change it to true. So you'll see these two are the same. I'm using a ternary operator. This is the parentheses for the if statement. So if checked is true, then do this, else do this. So it's the same as an if else statement, it's just called a ternary operator. So let me refresh and I'll do toggle single. And you'll see it still works. So you're gonna to wanna to know this for an exam. This is an alternative to the if else statement above. It's called a ternary operator. Here's my if statement, here's my else statement. So if checked is true, then do this, otherwise do this. That's my ternary operator. And I could put equal equals true here as well. It's gonna be the same. If you want it line by line the same as the first one, it will look like this. So if I toggle, you'll see it's the same. If I do it this way, if it's gonna be true, it's gonna go into the if statement. So if I save it, refresh, you see this works. If I comment this out, just to make sure it worked up here, take out the true, save it, refresh the page, you see it also works. So if checked is true, it's gonna go in the if statement, otherwise it's false, it's gonna go here. Okay, so this is a ternary operator, and we're gonna be using this frequently. So you're gonna to wanna to know what it is and know how it's used. So I can use this ternary operator to one, save lines of code, but also two, help me write the toggle all check. So if I scroll down here, how can I grab all the check boxes? Well, it's just like the radio. I can do it by type. I can look for type check box. Or if I wanna be more specific, I can do it by name, which in this case is going to be interest. So here I'm going to use the DOM. I'm gonna grab all the check box objects with an S. I'm referencing the DOM. I'm gonna use, instead of get element by ID, I'm gonna do get element by name. And I'm going to put interest array here because it needs to be case sensitive, the same. Technically, the array notation does not need to be used in this case. I'm putting the array notation here so you know it's an array. Technically, I could take this off and then take them off on all of these. So by default, if I get elements by name, we already know it's an array. In this example, I just wanted to show you that it's an array just by looking at the name. So if it's an array, I can loop through. I can say var i equal to zero. i is less than checkbox objects dot length. And then i plus plus, just like a standard for loop. I could write the if else, or I could use the ternary operator. So I can say, okay, for the checkbox objects i, if it's checked, just like we did before, if it's true, then do this checkbox object i dot checked is equal to false. Otherwise, checkbox object i is equal to true. Okay, let's see if this works. So I'll refresh the page, toggle single, toggle all. Okay, something happened there, so let's check out what happened. You'll see here, if it's true, I'm gonna set it to false. Otherwise, I'm going to set the checkbox objects to true. It's gonna go through one by one. It's gonna start at zero. It's gonna to go to length minus one. It's gonna check whether it's checked. Okay, you'll see in this case for true, I forgot to put the dot check property. Okay, I'm not just setting the object's I to true. I need to set the check to true. So if I refresh, toggle single, toggle all, you'll see now it's working. If I switch this up, you'll see that's toggling them. If I switch this up, it's toggling them. Okay, it's working if I toggle single, it's working. So both of them are working. I'm using a ternary operator to make the code much shorter. I have two functions, they're called function declarations. It's gonna grab the checkbox object, the first one, or it's gonna grab all of them, and it's going to change the check value to true or false depending on what it was set on before. So it's going to toggle it. Now just to show you real quick, name is always an array. I don't need to put the array notation there. Okay, if I remove it from the name attribute values, make sure I removed it up here as well, do a refresh, toggle single, toggle all, you'll see it still works. So all it's looking for is case sensitive, the same thing. I can put brackets here, I can put parentheses here, even though that's not recommended, you could do that. 
The reason I had the bracket there was just to show you that when you have a name, it's actually stored as an array. But it doesn't mean you need to put the array notation there. Okay, that's it for this video. We're going to go on to select. So continue to the next video.